Hello and welcome. This is the first video in the IB review series for biology, both SL and HL. Um, just an important note, this is um, not supposed to serve as a replacement for any course material. Rather, it is a um, review, simply briefing over some of the more important topics as well as going into a depth a little, um, but not too much. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so topic 1.1 is just an introduction to cells and that leads us to, oh, first, I guess, to show you the understanding, if you want to pause and take a look at what IB expects you to know. So first, that brings us to cell theory. Cell theory is composed of three different parts and basically says that all living things are composed of cells. The cells are the smallest unit of life, and cells come from pre-existing cells. Now, it's worth noting that these three things arose um, through the creation of the microscope. So the microscope led us to the discovery of cells and allowed us to see that there are common um, characteristics such as um, surrounding by a, um, a membrane, genetic material which controls chemical activities in the cell, and they all contain their own energy release system. So um, this kind of leads us to the next thing. If we have any um, rules in biology or science in general, that's going to lead us to exceptions, which are striated muscle fibers, aspartate hyphae, and giant algae. So these are the three exceptions. Here you'll see striated mu muscle fibers. Um, you'll see that even single cells are multinucleated, which kind of goes the, um, the idea against the idea of a common cell having only one nucleus. Here we have aspartate hyphae. They're not partitioned in any way, so this long branch, rather than having what may be like these um, partitions, they are simply just one long cell. And finally, we have giant algae. Most people believe that cells can never be seen by the naked eye, but this one cell can grow up to almost 7 meter, centimeters in length. So here's one example question from paper 1. What can be deduced about striated muscle fiber from both of these statements? A eukaryotic cell has one nucleus, and striated muscle fiber has many nuclei. So if you want to take a moment and pause. Okay, so it is prokaryotic. We know that a striated, that if any cell has a um, nucleus, it is eukaryotic, so it can't be prokaryotic. It's an exception to cell theory. It's kind of where we're kind of going here, because if it only has one nucleus and this striated muscle fiber has multiple, it's going to be an exception. Um, it consists of aspartate hyphae. Now, this is an organism. It is, so a muscle cell is not a type of, it's not, it's not a different organism. Um, and then we have preparing to divide. This gives you no um, signaling that's preparing to divide. It might trick you here by thinking multiple nuclei um, right before a cell divide. It kind of has two different nucleuses. I'm sorry, nuclei, but that's not the case here. What they're trying to get you to look for is that it's an exception to cell theory. Here's our second question about magnification. Real quick, it is worth noting that it's image size. Image size over actual size actual and that will give you the magnification so here we have a red blood cell is eight millimeters in diameter so eight millimeters or micrometer sorry and if drawn a hundred times larger so the magnification is a hundred times what is the diameter in millimeters so we're trying to find the millimeters here so what you would do is you would take this, do some basic algebra, multiply it, get 800 micrometers, and then basically just convert them to the same units. Um, it's worth noting that every millimeter is 1,000 micrometers, and what you end up with here is B, or 0.8 millimeters. So now moving on, it's um, another thing that IB wants you to know is that every cell, unicellular, multicellular, every cell has to undergo the functions of life. Um, while this is not a complete list, it kind of encapsulates most of what cells need to do in order to survive. So first we have metabolism, undergo chemical reactions. This, most people have to think of metabolism just as like burning energy, carbohydrates, the whole um, being fit. But no, it's actually just chemical reactions in general. Metabolism can, the main metabolism I guess that people are thinking about is cellular respiration, the process of creating energy from glucose. However, this can also occur in say the production of urea. Reproduction is also important because this is, um, back to the cell theory, a cell can only come from a pre-existing cell. So it's worth noting also that this can happen asexually through binary fission or sexually um, through fertilization. Um, and every organism must also have, respond to stimuli through sensitivity. This can be, a say, a human um, running away from an, a bear or a bacteria responding to um, maybe something it's, it touched with the cilia. 
homeostasis, every organism must be able to maintain a stable environment. This is, happens through um, all the other things such as metabolism, excretion, nutrition, and growth. This all kind of maintains the stable environment. Um, excretion is the removal of waste. It's worth noting that here it's me metabolic waste. It's basically the product, these chemical reactions, the byproducts are what the, the cell needs to get rid of. That kind of is different than digestion here, which is the removal of unused waste. So if we take nutrition, the exchanges of gases and material, if a cell, say, quote unquote, eats um, maybe like um, some piece of food that it's in uh, engulfed in it, uses it and then it still has some unused material, it'll adjust that not excrete it. Finally, we have growth and it needs to have the ability to move and change shape. Um, along with all these, another thing is that it needs to maintain the surface area to volume ratio. When a cell starts to grow, the volume, if you know um, the equation for volume, uh, the volume will increase cubically while the surface area increases squared. Um, this is kind of seen when you have like meters cubed versus meters squared. So the volume increases um, much faster than the surface area, which lowers the surface area to volume ratio. When this happens, something from inside the cell can't as easily move to the outside of the cell. Here you'll see that it's so much easier. So gas exchange, um, removal of waste, this is all much harder. Now this is overcome by cell division. If you divide the cell, say, four times, you have much um, more surface area. At the same time, cells can compartmentalize through the use of organelles, and finally, they can have a ruffled structure. This is more seen in, like, the villi... Oh, sorry. This is more seen, like, in the villi of large intestines. Increasing the surface area gives um, the cells more ability to work. So, real quick, we'll talk about... Um, here's another question. If you want to pause it and take the... Take a guess. Okay, so what happens to the cell surface area to volume ratio as a cell grows? As we saw here, as a cell grows, the volume um, increases by three folds while the um, surface area only increases two folds. So we already know that the surface area is going to be, de this ratio is going to be decreasing. So now we just have to look at the second part. The production of waste material is reduced. Well, if anything, the cell is huge now. The waste um, material production is going to increase dramatically. So that leaves us with D. It decreases to the rate of gas exchange is too low. Does this make sense? As we see, um, it takes much longer for gases to go through the whole cell rather than in this one. Here's another um, example question. Okay, so what functions of life are carried out by all unicellular organisms? Well, right off the bat, if you look through this, you'll see photosynthesis is in these three answer choices. Photosynthesis is not required. Say, we um, humans, for instance, don't require, um, go undergo um, photosynthesis. So that basically tells you that all of these three are incorrect, and it is, in fact, B. So I'd be required to know the functions of life as seen through paramecium as well as seen through a um, plant. So if you, this can be any of your choice. It's, not, it's up to you. So here in the paramecium, we have metabol metabolism. You'll see some vesicles here. Um, these vesicles are filled with enzymes. Um, oh, sorry. I was getting ahead of myself. Yes, metabolism in the cytoplasm will go through a series of under um, chemical reactions. There are, in fact, enzymes in the cell with help with... Um, cellular respiration. We have reproduction. Eventually this um, paramecium will divide and then it'll create um, two different paramecium's. We have sensitivity, the cilia, as you can see on the edge here. These will react to different things in the environment, homeostasis. As uh, you'll notice, or I guess you won't notice, but um, as we go in later in the course, you'll notice that there's um, there needs to be gas exchange between the environment and the paramecium in order to maintain pH and other factors inside the cell. Um, this vacuole in here will most likely uh, um, release waste into the environment. In nutrition, it'll go and say there's a piece of food over here, it'll engulf it. And then growth, of course, over time, this paramecium will grow. Um, going over to the plant real quick, we'll just notice that metabolism can be seen in the form of photosynthesis in the cyto, um, sorry, in the chlorophyll reproduction. Eventually, this cell will divide in, um, because it is asexual. Um, sensitivity, it'll need, it'll, oh sorry, it'll um, form colonies with others in order for protection. At the same time, it'll favor areas of light rather than not light. Homeostasis, it'll need to maintain that gas balance, which is really important for photosynthesis. Excretion, it'll need to remove waste. Um, nutrition, it needs gases and water for photosynthesis. And then, of course, like the paramecium, it will grow over time. 
that kind of leads us to the next thing. So emergent properties, um, if you can kind of see by the name, is when properties emerge. <laughs> so what you'll see here is that a cell can carry out the basic functions of life as we have just um, depicted. Now, a group of cells will form a tissue, and this tissue will be able to do things that the cell cannot. Say, um, we're talking about skin, and skin is able to sweat, is able to release sweat. Well, a cell alone may not be able to release the amount of sweat um, that you see, or may not be able to um, contract if it's on a cold day or expand when it's hot. The sweat glands um, are an emergent property of multiple cells coming together. At the same time, when you have multiple tissues, this will form an organ, and this organ will be able to do things that both the cell and the tissue cannot. For example, digestion. A tissue alone, the stomach tissue might be able to produce acid for digestion, but the whole process is needed in order for the, um, the whole stomach is needed in order for the digestion process to take place. And then finally, this will go up to organ system and organism. From here later, when we go into ecology, you'll see that organisms going on to create populations, which go on to create communities, which go on to create ecosystems, which go on to create um, whole biospheres. So now you may be wondering, well, how do we have different tissues and different cells? This is where stem cells come into place. A single embryo may does not have all the cells that it needs pre-existing. It has one type of cell called totipotent stem cells. Toady means all, which can differentiate into any different type of cell it needs. It's also worth noting that totipotent stem cells can also differentiate into the placenta. Most people might believe that the placenta is part of the mother's womb, but in fact it is contain, containing um, fetal or an embryonic um, DNA. It's also worth noting that there are three different places where we can get stem cells. They can get from the embryo, we can get it from the umbilical cord, but the umbilical cord must be preserved. And then finally, we can actually get it from adult, ma um, adult males, sorry, we can get adult females or males. We can get it from any adult um, in the bone marrow, as well as there, there's also some in the liver. So from here, you'll notice that these different cells go through a process of differentiation where they, um, take on different characteristics. Now this differentiation occurs through a pro, uh, process called gene expression. When certain genes are turned off and certain genes are turned on, this will prevent, this will cause certain cells to take on certain characteristics. So it's important to know that all, every single one of these cells contains the same set of genetic material. It just depends on which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off. Um, I guess I'll go over the other two types of stem cells, or the other four, three types. There's pluripotent, P-L-U-R-I potent, which is any type of embryonic, but not the placenta. There's multipotent, which can become any number of related cells. Say you have um, these cardiac cells. Well, not every single cardiac muscle cell is the same, so it can become variations of that. And then unipotent, where it can differentiate, but it can multiply. So basically one cell will can only ever um, give more rise to more of those cells. Um, I think that's pretty much it for stem cells. You must also know um, that this the power of these stem cells to differentiate into any other cells kind of leaves rise to therapeutic uses, which we'll cover here. So this is Stargardt's disease, which is uh, spelled S-T-A-R-G-A-R-T. That's the G, sorry, A-R-T, Stargardt's disease. And what happens here is... Um, or more formally known, Stargardt's muscular dystrophy is a mutation of ABCA4, which causes retina, um, retina mal malfunctions. This causes retinal um, de de degeneration, sorry, and it eventually leads to um, blindness. So basically what happens here is if we need to replace these cells, we can use, implement, we can implant some stem cells, which will eventually take over the function of the dying retina cells. IB also requires you to know one other named disease, and here I just showed leukemia. So you can see the le leukemia cells here, and they're overtaking um, the blood, and it's basically causing all types of problems. So now, in order to do, in order to cure this disease, what needs to happen is in the bone marrow where blood cells are produced. <laughs> my attempt to draw bone, the bone marrow needs to com be completely wiped out by chemo chemotherapy and what this does is this will stop the production of any leukemia cells however it'll leave um, the patient defenseless and not able to produce any other blood cells so what happens is stem cells are implanted back into the into the bone where the bone marrow was and that allows for the formation of new bone marrow 
Now, from here, you'll notice that we don't get the um, stem cells for this through a baby or, sorry, not a baby, or an embryo. We get it rather through um, bone marrow donations, which is very interesting. So, um, this is an example question if you want to take a moment to pause. What is an example of a therapeutic use of stem cells? Um, well, the sequencing of the human genome, any DNA can be used for this, any cell. So not necessarily, you can do it from stem cells, but it's not necessarily needed from stem cells. Forensic investigations of paternity, same thing. You just need any cell in any DNA in order to do this. Stem cells are not required for this in any for any particular reason. You have the production of genetically modified crops. Now, <laughs> stem cells can occur in all, uh, many different organi uh, organisms, such as humans, which are not plants. So, no. And therapeutic here, therapeutic is usually medically related. So, really, the production of mo genetically modified crops makes no sense. They're kind of narrowing it down. So, you have the gen genetic restoration of insulation tissue of neurons, which we'll talk about more later. And you'll, see, you'll notice here restoration of tissues. The restoration of tissues is mainly what stem cells are used for because they're able to differentiate into all these different things. Um, so basically now that we've covered 1.1, here's an example of a paper two question, which is all, um, which is all a free response. So A is outline the cell theory. What you wanna do here is um, what we covered in the beginning. The, you just need to write down the three different types. I mean the three different components. So all living things are composed of cells. A cell has to come from another cell and cells are the most basic unit of life. You'll notice on the side here marks if you don't know what marks are. Uh, marks are the amount of points you can get for answering that question correctly. Now since you'll notice that there's three different things here but there's only two marks. Most likely what's happening here is you'll only get one mark for two, um, two correct things and three, two marks for three correct things. So finally we annotate the electron micrograph. Um, so you may not know for sure what any um, organelles do, or if you're, this is end of your review, you should be able to quickly answer this question. But here, this is the cilia. And in a bacteria, what this does is it does multiple things, but um, so it, it, there's multiple things that you can put. It'll attach to a surface, it'll hold bacteria together, and it also participates in conjugation, which is extremely important when it comes to um, bacteria DNA transfer. Finally, we can, it says calculate the magnification of the electron micrograph. So now these are not my favorite type of question because you have to basically eyeball this. I'm going to say it's about 1.5 centimeters. So you put the image size over the actual size and then to find the, mag, um, the magnification. After you do all the correct calculations, you'll end up with about 15,000 times. Now, even if you weren't exactly spot on, I'd be accepting the answers from about 14,000 to 16,000. Um, thank you for watching.